Summer at the Dursleys by Mastercard in 42. Chapter 11. Movie night. Since the car alarm incident, Harry's Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia had kept an uncomfortable and ever-present eye on Harry and his friends. Luckily, their nastiness had lightened considerably, mainly due to the damage control they were performing to mend the relationship between them and their neighbours. Uncle Vernon had borrowed Hermione's answer and told the neighbours that bad wiring was to blame, though most of the neighbours cared little for this excuse. As for the actual reason behind the mysterious car alarm incident, the mechanic who looked at the vehicle concluded that nothing was out of the ordinary and the automobile was working just fine. He gave Vernon Dursley quite a stir when he said it was almost like magic. While Vernon and Petunia were completely convinced Harry or one of his friends were behind it, Without any proof, they were forced to drop the topic. Harry, Ron and Hermione had filled both Ginny and Neville in on what had happened, and both laughed, imagining the fury and look of discomfort on Harry's aunt and uncle when the alarm went off. Both Ginny and Neville insisted neither of them were behind it. Harry had ensured all of his friends that no matter what, whenever something went wrong in that house, he was blamed. It was only foul their anger to his relatives more. However, the Dursleys were not going to ruin today for any of them. There was an unimaginable excitement brewing in Mrs Fig's home. For today, Harry was taking his friends to the Muggle movie theatre to watch a picture. Ron and Ginny were both ecstatic, bombarding Harry and Hermione with curious questions on what to expect from a Muggle movie. Their childlike curiosity reminded Harry of their father, Arthur Weasley, and his fascination with all things Muggle. However, they were not alone with their enthusiasm, as Harry, Hermione and Neville were all delighted to be going to a movie. Harry, because he had never went to one before, Hermione because she never went with friends before, and Neville because he had never had friends to do anything with before. Should I wear my normal clothes or dress up? asked Ron. What you have on now is fine, replied Harry. Should I eat something beforehand? asked Neville. No, they have should have something there, like popcorn or soda, replied Hermione. I wouldn't mind more of that fizzy orange drink we we tried, Ron said. I'll buy you a soda if you want, offered Hermione. Thanks, Hermione. You're the best, beamed Ron, causing Hermione to temporarily blush. Now we should leave in ten minutes. The bus arrives at 4.45 and takes 15 minutes to get to the movie theatre. So we should arrive at the movies at 5. And the movie starts at 5.20. That gives us 20 extra minutes to... Harry interrupted Hermione. Hermione, try not to overthink this. We'll be fine, ensured Harry. It never hurts to be prepared. Luckily, we should get back to River Drive before Harry's relatives worry said Hermione. Since when do you care what those people think? snapped Ron. I don't, said Hermione sharply. I just don't want Harry in more trouble. You saw how they reacted when the car alarm went off. We'll be fine. Trust me, I know how to handle my relatives, said Harry. At that moment, Ginny walked downstairs to join them. What took you so long? asked Ron. It only took me five minutes to get ready, said Ginny. Ron, leave her alone. She's fine replied Harry firmly. Thank you, Harry, said Jenny, giving her, her brother a satisfied and triumphant smirk. Ron was stunned and confused for a moment. Since when did Harry defend Ginny from him? Sorry if I am late. I got a letter from Dean, said Jenny. Dean? Why would he write to you? asked Ron. Just asked me if I wanted to go out together for one of these days, replied Jenny. Hermione, Ron, and surprisingly Harry looked right at her. Hermione seemed intrigued by this development in Ginny's love life. Ron, on the other hand, looked livid and worried. Despite being somewhat friends with Dean, like the other Weasley boys, he was very protective of Ginny and didn't like the idea of her dating anyone. Harry couldn't help but listen in, a deep part of him hoping Ginny turned Dean down. What did he say? said Hermione brightly. Obviously she said no, said Ron, more forcibly than intended. If I say anything... It's my own business, snapped Ginny, holding her arms. Besides, I just got the letter. I haven't had time to reply. Are you? asked Harry, not realising what he had just said. I might. I'll think about it. Now, are we going to talk or are we going to see Apollo 31? said Ginny. Apollo 13? And yes, we're leaving, answered Hermione, getting up. Have fun. Remember to tell me how the movie was called Mrs Fig from the kitchen, waving the teens goodbye. The five were off, and despite Hermione's recurring fear they were going to be late, 
They actually arrived early. Ron's mouth gaped at the massive selection of sodas, candy bars, popcorn and chip flavours at the snack stand. Heh, <laughs> said Hermione, handing Ron ten pounds. What's this for? he asked. For you and Neville to get whatever you both want. But remember to get Ginny a cherry shake, explained Hermione, dragging Ginny to a secluded corner of the theatre. Hermione looked up at her with a most girlish and giddy smile, reminding the young Weasley girl of Parvati or Lavender. Ginny had a slight feeling of what this was concerning, yet still tried to pass off as clueless to the subject. So, said Hermione. So what, said Ginny, trying her best to sound confused. Don't play dumb. Is there anything going on between you and Harry? Asked Hermione, staring at Ginny. What? Nothing, said Ginny at once. Then why are you spending so much time with him? And why was he so interested in what Dean wrote to you? Pestered Ginny. How should I know? In case you haven't noticed, I'm spending the summer with him. Of course I'd be spending more time with him. Besides, wasn't it you who said I should try and move on and see other guys? Said Ginny. Yes, but that was before. Hermione had to stop herself. Never mind. Never mind what? Replied Ginny, suddenly interested. I don't want to get your hopes up, she said. Hopes up for what? Well, it's just, and I could be wrong, he seems interested in you, said Hermione, strained. Ginny's eyes widened and a faint smile merged on her lips. She had to catch herself and snap back to reality before the smile grew. I could be wrong, but I've seen that face on Harry before. It's the same face he had when Cedric brought Cho to the Yule Ball. I think that he was jealous, said Hermione gently. Ginny didn't know how to respond. She thought she had moved past him, past the girlhood crush on the boy who lived. However, now she felt a sl- some glimmer of hope resurfacing. A chance for her and Harry. And she was dumbstruck. Hermione thought she caught her, finally reaching through to her. Luckily for Ginny, Harry called a second later. Hey girls, you okay? Yes, replied Ginny quickly. Hermione and I were just discussing clothes. This isn't over whispered Hermione. Ron was holding a big tray of food, including popcorn and drinks for everyone. Here, I bought yours, said G- Harry, handing Ginny her drink. Thanks, beamed Ginny. Don't worry, Hermione, I got yours, said Ron, handing Hermione her drink. Raspberry, your favourite. Hermione beamed at him. Not only had she never seen Ron get anyone food, especially for her, but he had remembered her favourite flavour. Thanks! What theatre is it in, Harry? Theatre 12, over there, said Harry, pointing to the right. We should get in then. I always love catching the previews, said Hermione. Harry was happy. However, he actually, he was the happiest he had been in a while. However, if Harry knew anything, it there was always something or someone around the corner waiting to ruin his happiness. Whether it was Uncle Vernon, Aunt Petunia, Professor Snape, or even Lord Voldemort, there was always someone or something coming to rain on his parade. Harry was not disappointed. As for him and his friends, as were walking into the theatre, he heard the voice of his pudgy cousin. Ginny, Hermione, said Dudley. Fancy meeting you all here. Harry and his friends turned to see Dudley and his gang approaching. While Dudley wore his fakest and widest smile, none of them were happy to see him here. Harry wondered if he overheard where they were going to be here, or had followed them there. Dudley, how surprising, said Hermione, unconvinced. Yeah. Surprising, said Ron unpleasantly. Me and the boys were just hoping to catch a pick, replied Dudley sweetly. Yeah, hoping to see some uh, a good movie, said Piers. What page are you seeing? said Dudley. Apollo 13, replied Neville. You shouldn't see that. I hear it's boring and long, said uh, Dudley. You should come and see our movie. No thanks, replied Ginny brightly. We already bought our tickets. And besides, I have Harry to keep me company if it's boring. Dudley looked disgusted. It was beyond his comprehension how any woman would prefer Harry's company over his. What was wrong with this girl? He was Dudley Dursley and that was Harry Potter. He was the champion of smeltings and Harry was a nobody. No family, no money, no nothing. Harry couldn't help but look victorious and smile at his cousin's distraught expression. Before Dudley could reply, Hermione smoked. We should really get going. Our picture is about to start. Nice seeing you, Dudley. See you at home. Leaving an angry Dudley behind, they entered the theatre. They took up seats in the middle row, Ron making a priority to sit near the aisle for bathroom breaks. 
Ron, Ginny and Neville were staring around, taking in every inch of the theatre, from the sticky floors to the large screen in front. To Harry and Hermione, it was just another theatre, but to the others it was a brand new experience. Harry, you wouldn't mind if I sit next to you? asked Ginny. Ah, uh, sure, why not? replied Harry. Can I sit next to you, Ron? asked Hermione. Sure, replied Ron. Without speaking, the movie began to play. Ron, Ginny and Neville were completely enthralled by the picture, gazing up in awe at the visuals of space and the endless ocean of stars. Harry and Hermione were enjoying themselves as well. Hermione looked giddy, spending time with her friends outside of school was a fantasy of hers, and now it had come true. Harry was just glad to be spending more time with his friends during the summer, and not with the Dursleys. However, during the film, he couldn't help but look over at Ginny, finding her face beautiful in the light of the moving po picture. Ginny noticed this and couldn't help but wonder if what Hermione said was true. Two hours later, when the movie was done, the five exited the theatre. Ron, Ginny and Neville were completely and absolutely amazed. That was brilliant, proclaimed Ron. I thought it was pretty good too, said Hermione. Me too, said Harry. I'm just trying to figure out how they filmed in space, said Ginny. Ginny, don't be ridiculous. Muggles can't go into space, said Ron. Ron, Muggles have been to space. The film we saw is just based on a true story, explained Hermione. Ron, Ginny and Neville's eyes widened. Really? said Neville. Yes, although the, Amor the American muggles were the ones who mainly did it, said Harry. We need to tell Dad this, said Ginny. He'll love this. I was thinking we should bring Mum and Dad to one of these. Can you imagine him here? He'd love it, said Ron. Wide smiles came from Harry and Hermione's faces at the mental image of Mr Weasley watching a movie. I wonder if Dudley's film ended, said Neville. I hope not. I came here to forget about Harry's relatives, grunted Ron. I don't even think he was here to see a movie unless he planned to sneak in, said Harry. The less I deal with that creep, the better, said Ginny. As they exited the theatre, Harry heard a slight gasp coming from the alley back of the theatre. Hermione was busy trying to think of their best strategy to return to Privet Drive, and Ron was trying to think of how muggles could possibly go into space. Only Ginny noticed something was amiss with Harry, as his head wandered to the dark alley. Harry, you okay? She asked gently. I think I heard something, replied Harry. Slowly, Harry walked towards the alleyway, keeping to the side. Slowly, he took out his wand and acted as a trigger. The others sensed danger. One by one, they all took out their own wands and began to approach the alleyway. Figures began to appear and soon Harry recognised the hulking and chubby mass of his cousin and his gang. Turning in disgust, Harry saw that Dudley and his gang were up to their usual, yet still deplorable, antics. Dudley was holding a familiar neighbourhood kid by the collar. The poor boy had a bruised eye and was crying profusely. Harry recognised the boy as Tommy Bobbitt, the boy who lived close to Privet Drive and one of Dudley and his gang's victims. Why don't you cry to your mummy, you little punk? Dudley threatened, raising his fist for another shot, while his gang laughed. Luckily for Tommy, Dudley froze dead in his tracks when a gasp was heard coming from Hermione. What are you doing? Dudley and his gang immediately turned to see Harry and his friends, all of whom were staring with shocked, disgusted and angered looks at Dudley's actions. Upon seeing Ginny and Hermione, Dudley pushed Tommy behind him and began to panic. Ginny was glaring at him, her eyes like daggers stabbing the Dursley boy. Ginny, I was... we... I was just playing with good old Tommy, said Dudley quickly, though Ginny saw right through the lies. Playing? Is that what you would call it? Ginny snapped because it didn't look like fun to him. Get away from him, yelled Hermione, bravely walking up over to the gang and shielding herself between Dudley and Tommy. Tommy beamed up at the girl. No one had ever stood up for him, especially to Dudley Dursley. Harry felt a great sense of pride for his friend. I always knew you were rotten, but this, Ron said disgusted. I wasn't doing anything. Tell them, Harry, insisted Dudley using a bit of force at Harry's name. Harry was silent. He just stared at Dudley in sheer loathing. After a moment of silence, his friends took this as a confirmation of Dudley's cruelty. Tell them, replied Dudley through gritted teeth. Why? They know when I'm lying, replied Harry. Furious and resembling his father more than ever, Dudley looked like an angered animal and began to charge at Harry when Ginny stood in front of him, clutching her wand tightly. 
Ginny was only one more straw away from hexing Harry's fat cousin. Dudley seemed to calm slightly when facing Ginny, but Harry could see the fury beyond his eyes. Listen, love, and please move, said Dudley. No, and don't ever call me love, replied Ginny. Why not love, replied Dudley. Because you'll never be my love. In fact, if one good thing has come out of this, it's that I finally have a reason to tell you this. I will never be with you, ever, said Ginny. Harry, Ron and Neville were beaming at Ginny, while Hermione, trying to comfort Tommy, looked impressed. Dudley was utterly stunned. It looked like he was trying... It looked like he was grappling with concepts bigger than him. Despite his age, there were some words Dudley just didn't understand or refused to accept. No, please, not now. You can't have that and wait your turn were some of the phrases and words Dudley just wasn't used to hearing. Now, this girl was rejecting him, saying he couldn't have her. To Dudley, this was the worst of sins. I don't think you know how this works, said Dudley, moving closer to Ginny. I always get what I want. Like some primal instinct taking over, Harry, Ron and Neville moved in front of Ginny, wands at the ready. Don't you dare touch my sister, growled Ron like an animal. Soon Dudley's gang were behind their leader, ready to fight at a moment's notice. However, before any action was taken or any violence could erupt, the back door to the theatre opened. A short man in a red vest and a stern face appeared, and from the gold name tag on his vest, they could tell this was the movie theatre's manager. What is going on here? asked the manager, panicking Dudley and his friends scattered. Leaving Harry and his friends, the manager approached Harry looking at him. What happened? he asked again. Hermione stepped forward. Those thugs were beating this defenceless child, she said, rubbing Tommy's shoulder. They were trying to help him. Is this true? The manager asked Tommy. Although ashamed and upset, Tommy nodded, meaning yes. The manager's expression changed from stern and suspicious to grateful and beaming. He turned to Harry, an impressed grin on his face emerging. Well, you five are real life heroes, said the manager, who turned to Tommy. Why don't you all come inside? I'll get, you, I'll get you a free soda. Ron's face lit up as, as he rushed inside. Hermione, still holding Tommy's shoulder, rolled her eyes as she, fo- followed to- as she followed Ron inside. Harry, Ginny and Neville soon followed her. The manager offered to call the authorities, but Harry convinced him to just call Mr and Mrs Bobbitt, Tommy's parents. Tommy looked embarrassed by this, but did not argue. The manager was beyond appreciative of them, offering not only free drinks, but a ride home as well. Hermione and Harry, feeling like they were taking advantage of the man, declined. Tommy was quiet up until his parents arrived. Crying, Mrs. Bobbitt wrapped Tommy into her arms, before profoundly and unashamedly thanking Harry and his friends. Before leaving, Tommy did say one thing. With a faint smile, he looked up at Harry and his friends. Thanks, said Tommy. Don't mention it, beamed Hermione. Don't let my cousin get to you. Sometimes he's all bark and no bite, said Harry. And if he ever bothers you again... Call us, suggested Ron. Yeah, we'll straighten him out for you, said Ginny. With a smile, Tommy left with his mother. Ginny approached Harry, a sly grin on his face. I guess even outside of Hogwarts, you can't stop being a hero, she said. No, I guess not, replied Harry weakly. End of chapter. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed this because that's a lovely chapter. Oh, okay, so, okay. Things are heating up with Dudley, I mean... Not understanding those words at his age. Okay, Vernon, Petunia, you need to go to parenting class. <laughs> and also little Tommy being defended and comforted by Hermione. That's really sweet. And I love the, the Weasley's reaction to the movie. Really taking after their dad. That's really nice. Okay, okay. Let's see what happens next chapter, shall we? Bye, my guys, gals, and non-binary pals. You know what to do. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell. Keep each other safe and keep faith. I love you guys. Bye.